Hey guys, it is uh, Wednesday, January the 25th of 2023. <clears throat> I'm in uh, California right now doing a project and uh, have some downtime uh, today, this morning. So I figured I'd uh, catch up and uh, do a quick video, maybe like a market recap of just what's been going on, uh, what I've been tracking. I'll start off with the uh, Nifty 50. As you can see, daily cycle peaked first week of January. We're like in an AD phase, accumulation distribution, undecided volume. Uh, we only had one week vo uh, positive, which was this. These are Hikanashi candles. So it's kind of showing you undecisiveness. Doesn't really want to go up, but doesn't really want to go down. But there is a key trend line that it seems like 50-50 uh, is respecting. Now, when you take the uh, Hikanashi off and put regular candles, you get a better uh, glance of what's really happening under the hood. Undecisive here, but we fail to close above that key trend line. Uh, but you're still inside candles, you know, weekly candles, not really going up, not really going down. Uh, MACD is negative, uh, crossover. Let's look at the daily real quick just to see what's there. And when you look at the daily, uh, you could kind of get a picture, a better picture, just kind of oscillating back right here. This was a nifty 50s chance to trend higher. Uh, it was undecided here. It could have done it here on the 23rd. I, I put some dates on the last video to keep an eye on. And someone informed me that there was, there was some holidays uh, or the markets were closed. So I just told them to look at, you know, the day before and the day after. And so far on the 25th, uh, the bears came and flushed it down, but not fully to uh, take out the lows. So it may find support here, but if it does close lower than this, it's going to try to uh, retest it, you know, from under. Uh, and if that fails, then you have to be very careful. Uh, so these are regular candles. I switched to Hekanashi, and you can see that uh, it normally keeps you in trend here, and everything was looking good all the way to uh, Wednesday, which is today. Uh, this is one by one angle, although the MACD is still positive, so it's just kind of fluctuating back and forth. Um, so we have to close this above this trend line, and I got to look at the uh, scoring the range, other key levels of GAN's uh, technique. Uh, but we know that the cycles, the daily are down, the weekly are down. We know seasonality-wise, January is a weak month. So the odds are that it could either just continue going sideways or lower. Uh, but if we close above this trend line, we got to deal with the uh, one by two. And if we close above that, then chances are greater that it may want to test this high, which is as of now, I have it as a, a way five. And I'm uh, assuming that there's going to be some kind of ABC correction coming from here now that this cycle peaked. Okay, so this is uh, Uranium Futures, UX2. Uh, so I wanted to kind of touch up on what's going on here. Uh, we're still in the accumulation distribution phase. Hasn't really gone up, but it hasn't really gone down. And it's kind of testing these trend lines. That's all we have for now. The MACD is still negative. There's really no volume. If you look at the latest news, uranium eases from six-week high, uranium jumps to six-week high, uranium extends bullish momentum. That's all fine and dandy. You know, the markets have been very oversold. So, yeah, it makes sense. Uh, but the key factors here you want to uh, watch, you know, and I know uranium is, uh, especially the futures in spot, it's more like a dinosaur in regards to price action. But when it moves, it moves. Uh, the key thing is, we have to start making higher highs and higher lows uh, so it could be in sync with the uh, uranium stocks. And so far, it's hovering around 48.95, you know, just, just going sideways. So the uranium stocks could be going, they could probably go and, and retest all their highs that they did last year. As long as uranium is still around 48.95, just kind of going sideways, it's not really impressing to me. Uh, I would like to see things in sync not one thing you know all, all the uranium sectors just uh flying to the moon 
and uranium spot and futures just stagnant. There's a disconnection there. And you know, the other uh, uh, analysts could be, yeah, well, this reason, that's because of this, and that's because of that. And that's fine. Whatever reasons they have, you know, uh, let it be. Uh, but I like to see things in sync. If we're all going to go up, everything should be moving in the same pace. Uh, when there's disconnects, that's when, you know, there could be some high volatility, some, some risk and some traps. Uh, and then it has to, you know, revert, you know, back to the uh, center of gravity, what I call. But anyway, I digress. As you can see, we just kind of going sideways. Uh, your enemy future is kind of dinosaur. So you have to have the uh, Hekanashi just to kind of see what's going on. So I leave it there. Uh, and if we look at the uh, daily, you just see that, you know, it, uh, it gets moment, uh, momentum, and then uh, just here, as simple as just having a trend line, it just kind of stalls. It goes here, kind of stalls, and it's like you know, uh, it's like a like a Coke bottle. It's 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 you shake it, and it's going to explode in one direction. And what direction that's going to be? I don't know. We'll find out. But in regards to uh, uranium futures, just kind of stagnant. Nothing really uh, going on there. So I'm going to start off with the energy uh, uh, sector that I've been watching since I already ended with uranium. As you can see, this is crude oil. We've hit a Tom D. Mark knife candle uh, right here on the uh, 23rd. Having a tough time trying to poke its head out of the cloud. You can see that this is the uh, point of control over the three-month span, 79.93. Uh, and it looks like it may, may, may probably spend you know, poke out. This the weekly is starting to look positive, but you know, it looked positive here and failed the 20 and the 50 SMA. And then you got a sell signal. But the mobiles got positive here. You can see with the MACD uh, crossover still positive. Uh, so it's interesting here. This is the uh, point of control within a three year span, 8068. And it's just kind of dancing around there. And uh, on a three month, it's 80 right here, a value area high here. So this is a lot of resistance right here. Uh, sentiment is pretty low. It's uh, hovering around 26, while on the weekly, it's hovering around 45. So it's below already the 50%. Uh, but you do have a PPS buy signal. Uh, it's just going to be hard. Uh, you know, once we could break above 82, and get out of the cloud short term, I could probably see a potential rally up here uh, to even test at least maybe around uh, 96 and change up there. Uh, but, you know, that remains to be seen. Let's go to uh, the, uh, Brent. And it's the same thing, you know, battling the 20 on the weekly. Sentiment is low. Trying to get out of the uh, cloud on the daily. Uh, nothing's really changed there. Heating oil. Below the uh, point of control, which is 352. Uh, out of the cloud. Now trying to, you know, penetrate. Sentiment is very bearish. Uh, kind of hovering around the 50. MACDs, I think, on, on all of them on the daily just crossed over negative. Tom D. Mark knife candle, so they couldn't penetrate the uh, cloud. And now it's going to get a little crazy here. Uh, but if you believe you're going to go higher, anywhere to buy, you know, when you look at the charts, there's anywhere that these linear regression channels, just, you know, stair stepping going up and down. So once it makes it down, uh, maybe even the point of control, 325, uh, 23 or 314. Uh, even three dollars, if it pushes, you know, hopefully it doesn't take out this low. But if it pushes lower, it'll do another step and they'll continue going up. But so far, you know, there's a lot of things positive on the weekly. And when it's uh, bearish like that, it's probably good to start looking at it, or the sentiment is low because everybody's in one side of the um, of the boat. Uh, what else we got to look at? Natural gas. This is the <laughs> this is the worst one of them all. Look at that. This is the daily chart. Look how 
Tom DeMar came here, that didn't work out, and it's continued to push lower. How low can it go? It could go very low. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's the uh, point of control right here, 268, and a value area low of 212 from a three-year span. So it could go low, although the MACD is kind of forming a little base here. Uh, interesting is that the MACD turned positive here around the 6th, right there. And it never crossed over while this just continues pushing lower. Tom Dean, uh, Tom Dean Mark Knife uh, daily continue to push lower, continue to push lower. And this has been turning positive. I don't know what to say about that, but you know, I find it interesting how these uh, indicators are, do these things. Uh, but so far, I wouldn't be buying. Uh, not natural gas, not now. Uh, where's the uh, last one? Arbob. See, this is probably the strongest of them all right now, just because it came out of the cloud and pierced it, and now it's positive, hit a value area high, although it hit a Tom D. Mark Knife candle, uh, the daily, and it's hovering at the, above the value area high of 264. It's finding resistance here. Uh, and you got the MACD crossover on the daily. So there could probably be a little slight pullback, but this is going to be probably a better buying opportunity because it's already positive on the uh, weekly above the 20. So it's getting momentum to the upside. This is going to be a key level at 3 and 10 on gas. But uh, any buying opportunity right here for short term would be a good entry point with a 253 all the way to that 242, that little sweet spot right there, for it to maybe continue doing another leg higher. Now looking at the metals markets, looking pretty strong above the uh, cloud on the daily and weekly. And you can see that there was a Tom D mark right here, uh, the first week of January, and that didn't work out, That uh, that failed. Broke through the cloud. This uh, 1877 was strong level, and it penetrated it. And now it's hitting the value area high of like around 19, uh, you know, 40 and change. You're hitting the top of the linear regression channel, and this is a R1 uh, uh, pivot right there. Uh, so, so far it's strong and it's going good. MACD is positive. Volume is pretty good. Positive and on the daily, you can see you had a Tom D Mark knife right there, and the MACD has been chopping back and forth, and you're above all the you know moving averages here, and uh, chucking along high of 1943. I have my eyes on the dollar also and gold, and so far uh, the dollar hasn't turned. I had a date of January the 20th, and that hasn't. Uh, uh, Nothing's happened. It's just kind of just going sideways. It didn't like go lower, but it hasn't gone higher either. But so far, you know, if you're uh, long, keep trailing your stops. And uh, so far, it's looking good. If we could continue pushing higher, uh, then it, you know, it may uh, continue pushing higher. Let's look at uh, copper. Copper's looking good. You hit the uh, point of control already. Which is at four uh, four dollars and thirty, and the MACD already turned negative here. You hit a Tom D mark uh, knife, so you can see that the Tom D mark sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. That's that's how it is with these indicators, and uh, so far it's looking good. You know, just kind of going sideways here. Sentiment is strong, very bullish. Uh, and the weekly was uh, bearish around there, so yeah, I can see. Uh, it's a movement to the upside above the cloud on the uh, weekly, so that's positive. Uh, and you get about to hit the linear regression right here, 438, and also this key level, 450. Uh, but so far, is uh, you know looking good. The trend is still strong, and it's still going up. Palladium, not looking good, just kind of going sideways. I know there's some cycles that are, you know, are, you know, in, in the works of turning positive or art, you know, positive. I, at the top of my head, I can't remember. I got so much information. But you can see the sentiment is very bearish. And also on the weekly, you're around 25. Uh, so 
this is the time where you probably want to start looking at palladium just to kind of see, because it's not going to continue going down forever and just kind of see where it could be a possible turning point. So I'm, uh, I'm watching this one to see how this one's going to play out. But so far, you know, I wouldn't buy it yet. Everything pretty much is negative here. Uh, what else we have here? Platinum. Platinum so far, you know, doing good. Just kind of volatile a little bit, you know, oscillating. You see the sentiment now is kind of going down uh, while the weekly peaked here. Uh, hit this value area high of 1101. And uh, there's a lot of support here at this uh, 1000 level. and uh, Especially the cloud and some of the moving averages. Uh, kind of got a nice little pullback. Uh, but if, you, if it's going to go higher, this is kind of the area you probably want to accumulate right here when it pushes lower. I mean, to kiss the uh, point of control and it kind of bounced a little bit. Yeah, so that's that on palladium. I'm sorry, platinum. And silver. Silver's just been stalling. At the point of control of 24.17 on the weekly chart, it's kind of going sideways. And you really, you got a MAC, the D, a negative sell signal there. Uh, and sentiment is around 30. Yeah, it's a very oversold, very bearish. It kind of popped up 30. Uh, but finding support between that 22 and that, yeah, 22.50 to 20, you know, maybe 23. It's all good support right there, and it's above the cloud, so that's good. Uh, but it hasn't has it had it hasn't had a good move like gold, and you can see it's just chop fest: buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and now there's fifty SMAs creeping up, and you can see just the back and forth of the bears and the bulls uh, dancing around the point of control of twenty three, and it's already twenty three ninety five. So something's gonna have to give, it's gonna push higher, or it's gonna push lower. In either case, just trail your stops. Uh, I didn't cover the dollar, but I probably should. I just spoke about it. Uh, as you can see, it's an interesting play here. So January 20th, I know a lot of people say, you know, maybe looked at my title of the video and maybe thought, wow, on the 20th, is the dollar going to go to 114? No. It was... Uh, in a hidden way of saying that from the high that the dollar made, uh, whatever that day was, the 26th, or that, well, this is a weekly, maybe it was the 28th, November to, uh, September 28th, to January the 20th, which was somewhere, let's open this up, somewhere around uh, 18, right here, that's 114 days. So in Gann's technique theory, uh, he believed that price and time are connected. I just, I could, I'm just going to make it as simple as possible. So you look for 114 days, you look for 114 weeks, you look at 100 and, you know, uh, in regards to hours, whatever you, you could calculate time with 114. That's you would do projections like that. And so far, it didn't really do anything here. You could just see that it just kind of pushed lower and just kind of stagnant. You know what? It could just continue pushing lower. Uh, it's not guaranteed that it's going to work, uh, but sometimes it does work. Um, like I always said, you know, sometimes things, you know, work and sometimes things don't work. Uh, my research, I'm just trying to figure out why would things work on certain times and then why it wouldn't work on other times. So I'm trying to determine, is it, is it a cluster factor that, you know, right here, it didn't like uh, time and price interconnected together here. It didn't ex uh, create an explosion due to the fact that that was just like one uh, event or one cluster. Uh, compared to maybe seeing other things where it did meet the criteria where price and time met and it exploded, uh, why did it happen that time and then on another time and did it happen? So I'm trying to I'm trying to research that and figure that out just to give me peace of mind to see if that's the uh, case where 
you have to get multiple things lining up uh, in a perfect, you know, scenario or world. And that's why things happen. Not just because we hit 114 days, we're going to, you know, do a turning point here. So those are the little things I'm kind of researching and back testing. And that was one of them. Because I've seen it work on other things. Uh, I, I've tested it on the uranium spot price. And, uh, and that's a slow dinosaur right there. And I've seen some things happen, you know, what I call anomalies, uh, where things, you know, do uh, create an effect where something did cause it to change and the calculations matched up with the uh, outcome. So either way, I just want to let you know my thoughts on the dollar. Uh, looking at the uh, commitments traders report, commercials uh, are kind of leaning that, you know, they're buying and uh, large speculators are selling. So with the dollar, it looks like it may push lower unless it's a trap and they're trying to trick you like, you know, that the commercials are going short uh, and uh, uh, not commercial, uh, commercial are buying. But large speculators are selling, so we'll see when the uh, commitments of uh, uh, commitments of traders report comes out again. Let's see if that's going to still be playing out. Because if it is, then it's possible that it could continue pushing lower. Although I will say, keep an eye on that 100, you know, level. I have a I have a price of 98 using GAN square of nine, uh, and I see a lot of support here. You got the 200. Uh, right here, 97, you got the 100 right here, and you got this level of 100. And it could test down here and do a little capitulation um, and maybe, you know, turn around. But we'll see. There's a lot of things happening, uh, but I'm definitely keeping my eyes on it. But hopefully this video wasn't too long. I haven't done a video, so I'm kind of making up for uh, all the time I haven't had to uh, catch up with the markets, but good trading out there and I'll keep you posted on my thoughts on the uh, markets.